So today I'm going to be doing a bit of a vid video on my oleander coloring page. Oleander is a beautiful flower that grows year-round both in the Mediterranean and down in Mexico and I just love this flower. These are, are particular are pink and I'm going to be using permanent rose on them to uh, highlight that area. I'm also going to try a little bit in the background with a little bit of yellow and let's see if you enjoy what that's going to do. I am recording as well on my few other places so I've got to just change my volume here for a second. Alright, that's done. So one of the things that I can do for my background is I could do a nice bit of yellow wash back here and do some funky little uh, bits of dropping in color. And so I thought I would try a little bit by showing you that and hopefully you can see how that's done. I'm just going to pull that up a bit. Just do the bottom portion here for now, just so that you can see. So I've wet the paper with my Da Vinci Spin Synthetics. And um, I'm going to put in a little bit of my Hansa Yellow. It's hiding behind here. <clears throat> there it is. And so just with a little bit of Hansa Yellow, I'm going to drop that in. not too bright. Okay, so that's a little bit over here. That's enough right now so you can just see the effect. And what I like to do is take a little bit of phthalo blue that I have hidden away as well. Now it's going to turn green if I touch that, so I'm going to take a different blue. Let's try a little bit of cobalt here. Now I just touch it in there and let it play around here. Hopefully it will not turn as green as I'm expecting some of the other colors. So that's a bit dark, I think. So I'm going to dab that out a bit. A bit too dark. So what can I do to get that little bit of blue that I want without going obsessive? See, because that's the phthalo and that's a bit too, but what the heck, let's just pop in a couple of dots there. All right. Now I could even separate it more if I just dropped it and just let it disappear. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with my permanent rose. I'm just going to drop in just a little dot here and there. I could do it with a magenta. I have to have a magenta here. Let's see what happens with the magenta. If I just drop it in. And then all you have to do is add a little bit more water. And then let it just dissipate. I just want an interesting background. And what if I just added a darker yellow, my new gamboge yellow. Let's see what happens there. Okay, and again, you don't want to have such a defined color, just add a little bit of water to it. And if you want it really interesting, you could tilt it and let it run down. Okay, so that's the background I want to show you. We'll now uh, work on my flowers. So oleanderis tends to be a light pink and then it has some shadows in it. So this is a permanent rose. This is a perfect color for this. Could even be lighter. There's a kind of an orangey center to it as well. I've just got to be careful here because it might contaminate with some of the other 
water that's out there, but we'll just see, we'll push that into the center. And since there's so much color there, let's just push it over into our other flower. Make it more interesting. And if I took a little bit of the Hansa, I get right away, I get a bit of that orange that I wanted there, and I just don't want it to go too far, so I've got to be careful how much I put in there right now. Okay, so we'll let that play around. Now let's go over here. That's oh, that's too yellow. And let's pop in. Make it a little bit more corally on this one. It can be this color too. Let's pop that into here. And let's pop it into here. Add a little bit more of the pink to it. That's going to be too dark. Let's make that bud a little bit darker. They tend to be a bit darker at the top when they're really tight together. Let's pop a little bit more in here. Oh, where have we got? Oh, there's some there. And it's down below here too. Let's lift that a bit. Up that, and we can put a little bit more yellow in it, change the color a bit, make it a little more peachy. This is what, why it's so much fun because you don't have to have exactly the same colors, but just with using two little colors there, you can get a really interesting mix. Okay, so now let's take my permanent rose again, just pop it in a little bit more in here. Now these stems actually are quite dark red, almost a magenta color. So I could actually take some magenta that I just happen to have here and pop them in. And then as they go further down they actually become more greenish. Let's pop that right in there. So in the green, let's, let's pop a little magenta in there. There's little flecks usually, or just around the edges too. Okay. Now the green, I'm going to use green gold if I can find it, and it's not too far away from where my videos are. And we'll use a little bit of phthalo blue with it too. So the green gold, let's start with the green gold here. Almost looks exactly like the yellow that I've got. But once you pop in a little bit of the phthalo, wow, you get this great green. And if you go any darker, you get a beautifully darker green. And the oleander tends to have a, kind of an olivey, but it, it will go darker. And it's quite glossy, too. So I'm just popping some of the color that I still have on my brush from mixing those two together. Oh, there's a little bit of a bud over there. Okay. And it's creeping out. Now this is part of my coloring page series that I have. I actually transferred the coloring page onto a piece of watercolor paper so you could see slightly the difference of uh, 140 pound versus 90 pound paper. This is a Fabriano paper that I'm using today. And you can see how the water is manipulated and changes and stuff. So that's kind of interesting too, so that you can see. But on the coloring page, because it's 90 pound, it would work quite nicely as well. But that's one of the beauties with the coloring pages. They're individually set up so that you could go in and take it and trace it and have some fun with it. These are still a bit wet, so they're not holding their centers very well. Now you could also pop in a little bit of that color of the permanent rose. 
because it's a complement to the green and you could get some nice shadows under here if you wanted to get some shadows to make it look like the petals are giving a bit of shadow underneath the branch. Okay. That just kind of uh, desaturates the color and neutralizes it a bit. There we go. And what else can we do here? Well, why don't we go up a little bit higher? I'm just going to move my painting down a bit. And let's clean my brush. And we can do some more of that yellow process behind here before we get into the flowers. So again, just taking the water and moving it around the outside of the background. And now taking just some nice Hansa yellow light and then just popping it right in. You can even pop it right into the leaves too. Just watch that you don't get it over too much, but that wouldn't hurt. It's going to change it a little bit, make it a little different than the green gold oil. Why not try it? Okay, doing the same thing, we're going to pop in a little bit of the phalo. Just add a bit of water to it, let it play around. I could use a spray bottle too, I hadn't thought of that. Um, take a little bit of a rose, pop it in. Let's pop it a little bit more in down here. Um, let's see, I was thinking of cadmium orange. Let's see how that works in there. Kind of reminds me of putting sprinkles on cupcakes. And how is that cameo? How would that work in there? If we put some of the orange directly, because it's supposed to have mixed and it seems to have disappeared. It's a bit pretty bright there. I don't know. That's a bit too strong, I think, for the coloring. You don't want to introduce too many different colors into your painting because it can actually impact maybe a little too much. If I put a little bit more permanent rose over top, maybe that'll work better. Let's bring in some ooh, nice dark colors here. Let's do that. Those leaves. Let's bring it over here. Over here. And I keep forgetting that these beautiful little blossoms are quite dark too. And there's a little bit more flower in there. So I think we've caught all, oh, there's a little bit of flower there too. All right, let's bring another little bit of red into there. And I saw another blossom there. Darker red right here, why not? Let's play it up. That's all looking good. Now I really like that darkness there, so let's see if I can pop in maybe a bit more dark in here. A little bit of variation. Okay, and I mentioned that the stems, when they're close, are that same color. So there's some nice stems here that we can just pop in that color into. Or a little bit of magenta. I think that's a stem. Oh, there's another bud. A little bud. We can even go a little alizarin if you wanted to. Let's see where my alizarin is. That may be too dark. And I said, what did I say about making sure you don't put too many different colors into your mixes? So we have so far the colors that we kind of popped in around my exterior painting, and then the first permanent rose. Then the Hansa Yellow Light, then the Quinn Gold, and a little bit of Cadmium Orange, and now Alizarin Crimson. So you do have to, and the Phalo Blue, you do have to, you want to keep it to about six colors. You don't want any more than that if you can avoid it. 
because then it starts to get a bit out of control and it can be a bit darker, too, too difficult to work with. Okay, so back to our queen gold, which I've got here again. And I'm going to pop them into all the different leaves here. And then add by a fill blue. Now this turned out much richer, so why don't we add some more of that to underneath here. Sorry I wasn't able to get on at 4 o'clock. I was busy setting up a video for one of my art classes that I have online. We do Tuesday nights or Wednesdays during the day and we do an intermediate watercolor class on Zoom. And you can check out the information on my website if you're interested. We're going until December the 9th, I think. There's three more classes. Tomorrow's one and then... yeah. Oh, actually there's just four more classes if it starts tomorrow. So there you go. But these videos are going to go on to both YouTube and I'm going to try and save it to Twitch. Oh, that should be a different color there. All right, let's get some more phthalo blue in here. And where's my Gwyn gold? Let's mix that up a bit. Get some shadows in here, darks. Now the green is a good uh, control against, or looks good as a complement to the pink. And so we just have to try and get some nice shadowing there too, make sure it's a little darker so we can then get the flowers to pop a bit more. So let's put a little bit more shadow and dark in there. How about over here, how are we over here? That's looking pretty good there. Just want to, um, we can even drop some more of that color just behind if we don't find that it's strong enough or if it's looking to, this is a bush so we can, we can send it out and just play with it. It's all part of the fun. Okay. Let me just have a look at this and see if we need to dab a little extra color. Yep. Let's take a different brush. So let's put, I'm just going to pop in a little bit of color in the center. And I'm going to come back with that cadmium orange here. Really disappeared. Okay. And I'm coming with some handsome yellow too, just to make it interesting if that's going to work or not. Not sure. I think the permanent rose and the and the Hansa is much better. It it's staying a little bit more a little stronger. Let's pop in just at right at the base a little bit more permanent rose. That's a bit better. Well, and what was I saying about adding a little bit of neutral into the mix? Well, there was another stem. Uh huh. Here was another stem, and I forgot to put that color into. Just think that there's some somewhere out there, just a couple more. And I think there we have it. So all I need to do is pop my signature on there somewhere. Let's do that. Ooh, that per, per that phalo blue looks a little nice there, popping in a bit of shadow in there. Let's do that. Just drop that in for a little bit of the background shadow. Get it some depth in there. The cooler color will help to draw your eye in. So there you go. Yeah, a little bit down here. All right. 
Well, thank you for watching the demo. This will be on uh, YouTube as well. I've got it recording and then I'll upload it to the YouTube channel. And I'm hoping to save this now as well. So thanks for watching.